I can imagine that you clicked on this video because you're looking at Fujifilm cameras. Almost every smaller Fuji camera that everyone is looking for is sold out because they are just insanely popular these days. But there are cheaper alternatives than the X100V or the XE4. Like this one for example, the X-T100. It's a camera that looks nice and retro, has a small form factor and comes at a fairly cheap price on the used market at least. But the question is for this video, is it any good in 2023 and would I recommend this one? Nope. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that harsh. I'm already spoiled with higher end cameras, like the XC3 for example. But it could be different for you with this one. I've put this camera the past week through the tests and I'm going to give you all the ups and downs about the Fujifilm XT100. As a video and photographer, I've been using Fujifilm my whole career. Started out with the Fujifilm X-T3 that's still rocking after 4 years of solid use. After that I've invested into the Fujifilm X-E4 which is more for my everyday carry and street photography. In my opinion, the Fujifilm X-T100 is the latter category because it's more targeted towards the beginner photographer or the hobbyist. I took it with me on a shoot for one of my clients and I have to admit that I wouldn't recommend this one for more professional use. The Fujifilm X-T100 was released in 2018, five years ago, and packed together with this 15 to 45 millimeter Fujifilm kit lens you're basically good to go. It would be an ideal camera if you want a lot more than your smartphone can do and you don't want to pay the main price. The camera is small, light, very easy to carry and gives professional results. Next to that it has an interchangeable lens system so if you wanted to upgrade this boy which I definitely recommend you absolutely can. As some people say date the camera marry the lens. The X-T100 was just slightly above the Fujifilm's X-A5 in the Fujifilm's camera line. It has much more in common with this camera. Extra above all is the electronic viewfinder. I personally enjoy it a lot more when shooting with the viewfinder because you can be a lot more precise before taking your shots. There's also a flash built in which can be nice if you can achieve a vintage look that's very popular on social media. I made a previous video explaining everything about this topic and I'll link it up here or here. Also a good factor is a tilt screen which you can use for filming yourself or vlogging. While we talk about vlogging let's talk a little bit more about some video specs. Something I really don't get with this one is that they promoted this as a 4K camera. It does shoot in 4K, yes, but in 15 frames per second. I really don't get anyone who wants to shoot in 15 frames per second. I think they just wanted to print 4K on the box just to lure you in um, when buying this camera. But besides that, you can shoot in full HD, which is more than fine if you wanted to create a simple vlog. Let's take a look at an example that I've made. I'm using the 15 to 45 right now because it's more wide angle than my 18 to 55. The flippy screen is quite handy because I can constantly see myself since I'm not very used to vlogging and I'm not used to having the, the screen by the side of the camera. I can understand why Casey nice that it's wearing sunglasses. So that way I can constantly look at the screen seeing if everything is in order. Now my opinion about the video capabilities are not so great. I would bring this one on a professional shoot. Just an example, if I wanted to press the little red button right here, it's really hard to reach and also it's not very responsive. 
It's also very small and with my big hands, yeah, it's a little tedious. I much rather have the shutter button right here to be used as a start stop button for video. Like they did with the XC3, which works perfect. Now probably the biggest reason why you would choose this camera are the Fuji colors. There are the popular Fujifilm simulations like Astia, Velvia and my favorite Classic Chrome. There's a quick menu like every other Fuji cam where you can quickly adapt any settings like highlights, shadows, colors and many more. These settings are a bit limited. When compared to my X-T3 or X-T4, there's no grain or chrome effect. Also, a big disappointment is the fact that you only have one custom preset slot. On my other cameras, I can select a few different custom preset slots and flick through and see which one I like the most. But still, if you have the time and you want to play around with it a little bit, then there's still an option to create a custom recipe. And then when you want to change it, you have to erase all of the settings and start over completely. Yes, it is more time consuming, but it still is possible to create those stunning Fujifilm recipes. Just take a look at Fuji X Weekly. It's a blog or an app where you can find custom recipes for Fujifilm cameras. Just be mindful that the sensor is different. For example, the Fujifilm X-T100 houses a buyer filter, while the other Fuji X cameras house a X-Trans filter. I'm not going too much into detail because that's a whole different topic. It still plays a huge factor in these Fujifilm recipes. Now we're talking more nerdy, the X-T100 has 23 megapixels, which is more than enough for great photos. It weighs 450 grams and the autofocus is good, but not great. For example, if you want to take a shot of a moving subject and you're moving as well, then your photos might be a little bit more wonky, like this one, for example, that I took. So it's not very reliable when you want to take this one on a sports shoot. So you have to be very, very patient before the autofocus really nails it. Next to that, it has Bluetooth functionality, so you can transfer your photos to your smartphone. Unfortunately, it doesn't support the newest Fujifilm X app, so you have to use the older one, which can be quite frustrating, but it still does work. To conclude this video, I can say that I'm too spoiled with my other more professional cameras. So this one is not for me, but I can imagine that this one might work perfectly for you if you just started out with photography or you just want a nice Fujifilm camera to produce these nice colors. I try to be as unbiased as possible. And since this camera is only available on the used market, I would go for other options like maybe a used X-T2 or maybe an X-T3. With that, you'll have have more video capabilities and you have custom preset slots on your camera which I found very very interesting if you wanted to go for a Fujifilm camera. If you have other opinions about this one then please leave them in the comments it's always interesting to hear your thoughts. If you like this video then please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet then you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see each other in the next video. Take care bye bye.